Hey guys, uh, hope you guys are doing well. Hope you had a good Easter. Uh, today is the 13th, Monday. Um, I'm going to go ahead, I know I'm kind of uh, a little late here. Typically I already have this posted, but uh, didn't get a chance to do it this weekend. So uh, this is Monday's lesson. Um, uh, hopefully you guys all turned in your uh, quizzes. I will have to, I haven't graded them yet. I'll have to go over today and uh, grade all those. I'll let you know what you received on those quizzes. Um, but today we're going to look at lesson 9.4, solving by completing the square. So on Thursday, we talked about completing the square and how this, um, how the process works. Today, we're going to implement the process into these equations, okay? So we're going to take the process that we learned on Thursday, and we're actually going to apply it to an actual equation, okay? And, and solving the equation by using this completing the square, all right? So it should be somewhat familiar since we did a whole lesson on how to do the completing the square. Now we're just throwing it into an equation uh, to actually solve using that method. So uh, go ahead and type Title your notes for today, lesson 9.4, solving by completing the square, okay? Um, and we're going to walk through these steps here of how to do this and then um, uh, do, some, uh, do some of these problems so we understand how all this works. Let me open up my whiteboard here. Um, so we've got solving by completing the square, all right? There are, uh, there's basically a six, um, excuse me. There's basically a six-step process to this, um, so let's go over these steps real quickly here. Sorry, my computer is doing things I don't want it to do. Um, all right, so um, step number one, again, this is solving a quadratic equation by completing the square. So number one, we're going to simplify. Okay, um, and when I mean slip, simplify, what we mean is we're going to put our equation in the form ax squared plus bx equals c. Now, that I know I have this negative here. The reason why this is negative because typically um, our equation up to this point would look like this. Okay, and so when we take this and move it over here, it becomes a negative. But remember, if our equation stated ax squared plus bx minus c, and I moved it over, then it would be a plus c over here. So the only reason why there's a negative here is because this is our typical standard form, and when we move our c over, it becomes a negative. This c does not have to be a negative in order to move forward. Just this particular term must be on the right side of the equation, or of the, yeah, of the equation. Um, so don't let that negative sign confuse you. It just is negative because it was positive over here, and then we're moving it over, all right? It does not have to be a negative in order to solve, but it must be in the form x squared here, x here, and then our whole number here, okay? Um, so that's what we mean by simplify. We're putting it into this form, okay? Uh, step number two uh, is divide both sides. Okay, um, and the purpose of this is so that our A is equal to one. Okay, in other words, I cannot have 2x squared here, okay? It has to be uh, a 1. It has to be just x squared in order for me to move forward on this equation. So this a here must be 1. If it is not 1, then we have to divide both sides by whatever a is so that we get just x squared so that we can move forward, okay? So my a has to equal 1. So this step of dividing both sides only takes place if I have a numerical coefficient other than 1 with my x squared. And we'll see a couple of those examples so you can see what I mean. Step number 3 is to square. Okay, uh, and we did this um, on last lesson. Okay, we square half the linear equ uh, linear coefficient, and then we add that. Um, we'll put this in our notes. Add 
to both sides. Okay, um, so we square that linear coefficient and then um, we add that square to both sides um, of the equation. Okay, step number four then is to factor. And again, we've gone over some of these steps last lesson, um, so it should be somewhat familiar as we're going through. But we're going to factor uh, the left side. Okay, um, and then uh, simplify the right side. Okay, so we're going to factor the left side, simplify the right side, and then on number five, step number five, we're going to extract. The root. And solve for X. Okay, um, now, uh, again, let's be sure to add this uh, plus minus sign um, on the right. Okay, and again, we'll go over some of these examples so you can see what I mean, but we're going to need this plus or minus sign um, on the right side of the equation. And then number six is just to check. Um, our equation. So these are our steps. First, we have to put it in simple form, meaning x squared first, then x equals whatever our uh, number is without a variable. Okay, so we're going to put it into uh, this form here. After we do that, if my x squared has something other than 1 here, I'm going to divide both sides so that my a or my x squared term has a 1 coefficient. Okay, if it already has a one, then we don't have to divide both sides. Um, we can skip that step because it's already done. Step number three is we're going to square and then add to both sides. Step number four, we're going to factor and simplify and then extract the root and solve for x. Okay, um, and then of course we can check. Um, to make sure that we've got that uh, correct. All right, let's go ahead and go through some of these problems uh, so we can see how exactly we work through these steps. So I have this equation x squared plus 4x minus 7 equals 0. My first step is to put it in the proper form, okay? So this term has to move over to the right side of the equation. So I have x squared plus 4x. Now remember, this is a negative here, so this becomes a positive 7 on this side. Okay, now I'm going to complete the square. How do I complete the square? I take my linear term, which is 4, okay, and um, I square half of that. So what is half of 4? Well, that's 2, okay? So then I square my 2, uh, which is 4, and I'm going to add that 4 to both sides. So I get x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 7 plus 4. Now remember, if we forget how to do this, let's go back to last lesson and review this. But we take our linear term, multiply it by 1 half, and then that answer you square, and that's the number that you add to both sides of your equation. Okay. Now the next step is to factor and simplify. So we factor the left side, okay? Um, so we have x, uh, let's see, plus 2 squared, and this 2 is basically from here, okay? Um, and then we simplify the right side. So 7 plus 4 is 11. Okay, so now from here we're going to extract the root. What does extracting the root mean? Go back and review if you have to, but we're going to square root both of these. Okay, so I have the square root of x plus 2 squared, and then don't forget your plus and minus sign. Okay, that has to be included in there. Okay, so here we get x plus 2. That is the square root of x plus 2 squared, okay? Um, here, 11 does not have uh, a square root, uh, an even a perfect square root. So we're going to leave it in the square root there, okay? And then we're going to solve for x. So now we've got x. We take this 2, move it over, so it becomes a negative 2, plus or minus the square root of 11, okay? Um, so now this... 
to solve for x, we're going to solve for both negative 2 plus the square root of 11 and negative 2 minus the square root of 11. Okay, so we go through both of these processes um, to um, find out what we're dealing with here. Okay, um, so uh, and then after that, you can um, you can check. Uh, to make sure that that is accurate by plugging that number back in, okay? Um, but uh, that is basically the process here. So we would plug this back into our equation. Uh, and what we would have here, um, let's see, let's just go through some of these here. Let's, let's go through our check, okay? Um, so we've got... Uh, let's see, we've got the x squared. So I'm taking this... Okay, and plugging this into here, okay, first I'm going to use negative 2 plus the square root of 11. So we've got negative 2 plus the square root of 11 squared, okay, and this square comes from this square over here, plus 4 times negative 2 plus the square root of 11, okay, um, minus... 7 equals 0. So again, we're going back to our original form here when we're doing our checking, all right? Um, so if I were to square this, this is basically the FOIL process. Negative 2 plus the square root of 11 times negative 2 plus the square root of 11, okay? Um, and that becomes this right here. So we have a negative 2 and a negative 2. That gives me a positive 4. Then we've got a negative 2 um, uh, times uh, square root of 11. So we've got, uh, excuse me, wrong sign. Okay, we've got negative 2. So negative 2 times the square root. So we've got negative 2 and the square root of 11. Okay, and then we've got negative 2 times the square root of 11 which is another negative 2 in the square root of 11. And then we've got the square root of 11 times the square root of 11, which gives me um, 11. Because when we multiply a square root by a square root, we're basically removing the radical sign. Okay, so that is, uh, this is for our first term here. Okay, this is for this right here. All right, so we took this, and we squared it, and this is where we get this from, okay? Now, I'm going to also multiply 4 times this. So we go 4 times a negative 2, and again, I put a plus sign. That shouldn't be plus. So 4 times a negative 2 gives us a negative 8, and then 4 times uh, the, the square root of 11 gives me 4, and the square root of 11 minus 7 equals 0. Now, I understand that that is a lot of numbers there, okay? So just try and keep track the best you can. All of this comes from squaring this, and then this part comes from 4 multiplied by each of these terms. And then don't forget your uh, whole number there of negative 7. Okay, now let's combine our like terms. We've got a negative 2 and the square root of 11 and negative 2. These are like terms. So we can add those together. So we have our 4 here, and then we have a negative 4 and the square root of 11. Uh, then I've got an, an 11 and a negative 8, which gives me a positive 3. Then 4 and the square root of 11, and a negative 7. Okay, now this negative 7 can also be um, added into my 3 and my 4, okay? So both of those, all three of these numbers then can be added together. So I've got 4 plus 3 minus 7. 4, 5, 6, 7 minus 7 equals 0, okay? So these are all going to end up canceling out, okay, when I combine them together. Here I've got a positive, or excuse me, a negative 4 in the square root of 11, and a positive 4 in the square root of 11. So those cancel out. So what am I left with? 0 and 0, okay, which is what I want. So now I know that x equals negative 2 plus the square root of 11, okay? 
Now I have to do it again, but this time instead of plus the square root of 11, I'm going to use minus the square root of 11, okay? So let me erase this. Hopefully we got all of this in our notes, but let's go ahead and erase this and we'll do the um, negative aspect of this answer, okay? And I know this is a lot of work, guys. We just got to work through it. That's part of um, doing this stuff. It takes time, okay? Uh, there are no shortcuts here. So we have our equation, okay? This equation here, we're going to plug uh, negative 2 minus the square root of 11 squared. That's our first term, okay? Plus 4 times negative 2 minus the square root of 11 minus 7 equals 0. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to factor this, okay? So negative 2 minus the square root of 11 times negative 2 minus the square root of 11, okay? So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times uh, negative 2 times um, a negative uh, 11, a square root of 11 gives me a positive 2 and the square root of 11, okay? And then I've got this and this, which is also a positive 2 and the square root of 11. And then I've got the negative and the negative, which gives me a positive 11. Okay, and then I've got 4 times 2, which is negative 8. So here I'm at here. 4 times 2 is a negative 8. And then 4 times a negative 11 gives me 4, negative 4 and the square root of 11 minus 7 equals 0, okay? So again, we have this is all from my first term here, and this is from my second term, and then this is from here, okay? So split these up and then um, solve them each individually and then add all of those answers together, okay? So now I've got, looking at my whole numbers, I've got 4, 11, uh, 8, and 7. So 4 plus 11 is 15, okay? 15 minus 8. I should have brought my calculator in and I didn't, okay? Uh, give me just a second here. Let me pull a calculator up so I get the right numbers. Okay, so we've got 4 plus 11 minus 8 minus 7, okay? So these, when I add them all together, they all cancel out. They equal 0, okay? Now, I've got a positive 2 in the square root of 11, a positive 2 in the square root of 11, so that's 4 and the square root of 11, positive 4, and then I've got a negative 4 and the square root of 11, so this and these two are going to end up canceling out. So what do I have left over? 0 and 0, okay? So it's a long process, but um, you have to take the time to do it. So my answer in this case then is x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 11, okay? So this would be uh, my answer for that. All right, now uh, let's go ahead and do another one because I know this can be a confusing process with all of these um, steps to do and things. My computer is just running so slow today. I'm not sure what's going on here. Clear my canvas, please. I'm not sure why this is doing this. Give me just a second. We'll clear all this out. Okay, sorry about that. My computer is just not cooperating today. All right, so look at page 319. Um, we're on example 9.4b, 9.4b. Okay, so same process here, only here we're going to run into uh, a fraction, so we're going to work out um, by completing the square with a fraction. So I've got this... Um, x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals 0, okay? So my first step is to put this in the proper form, giving me x squared uh, plus 5x equals 6. So this term has to be on the right side of the equation. My next step is to complete the square. So I take my linear term, 
which is 5 times 1 half equals 5 over 2, and then this would be squared. Okay, so I'm going to add this um, to both sides. So we've got x squared plus 5x plus 5 over 2 squared equals 6 plus um, 5 over 2 squared. Okay, now this is also 25 over 4, okay, and you can put that in there if you want because you're going to need it when you add it to the 6, but we can do that in the next step or we can do it in this step. So I could write this as 25 over 4 and do that in this step, but either way uh, you can do it as fine, okay. This we're just going to leave in the square because we don't really need this, the actual number here because we're going to factor it so it doesn't really matter. We're going to break this down and our next step is factoring. So we factor x squared plus 5x plus 5 over 2 squared to be like this, x plus 5 over 2 squared. And then we've got 25 over 4 uh, plus 6. If I add those together, I get 49 over 4. Okay, now uh, in this step, you can either do the 5 uh, over 2 squared plus 6, or you can already have it in 25 over 4 and then add it with 6. And again, you can use your calculator with this, guys. I don't mind you doing that. Um, just plug in your numbers and get this fraction here. Okay, now, now that we have uh, our factored and simplifying done, we're going to extract the root. So we square root x plus 5 over 2 squared plus or minus the square root of 49 over 4. Okay, um, so the square root here is x plus 5 over 2, and then we get uh, plus or minus... 7 over 2, because the square root of 49 is 7, the square root of 4 is 2. So this is what we have here. x plus uh, 5 over 2 equals plus or minus 7 over 2. Now we're going to solve for x. Okay, we've extracted the root, so now we can solve for x. So we have x uh, minus 5 over 2 plus or minus 7 over 2. Okay, now we can solve for both of these. So we've got x equals negative 5 plus 7 over 2 because they both have the same denominator, okay, which then would give me uh, negative 5 uh, plus 7 divided by 2 equals 1, okay. And then I also have to do the negative. So I've got x equals negative 5 over 2 minus 7. And x is going to equal a negative 6. So here are my two answers. x equals 1, x equals negative 6. So notice, because I don't have any square roots left, okay, I'm solving for both the positive and the negative, which is giving me two totally different answers, okay? So then I have to check with both of these answers. I take this form of my equation and I plug in x for each of these. So I've got x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals 0. I've got 1 squared plus 5 times 1 minus 6 equals 0. 1 squared is 1, plus 5 minus 6 is 0 and 0. Then I do the same thing for negative 6, okay? I've got my x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals 0, and I'm plugging in negative 6. Squared plus 5 times negative 6 minus 6 equals 0. 6 times 6 is 36. 5 times negative 6 is a negative 30 minus 6, combine those together and you get 0 and 0. So my check here tells me that these two answers are correct. Okay, so this is what I would put then on my line is x equals 1 and x equals negative 6. All right, um, so those are uh, how we um, use completing the square in an equation. Okay, like I said last week, 
uh, uh, last lesson we talked about just the steps for completing a square, but we didn't apply it to an actual equation. So today we're taking those steps and we're actually implementing them into an actual equation. Okay, now we did not cover any equations where we had to divide to get our x by itself. So let's look real quickly at one more example of where we have to first get our x squared to equal 0 before we can do anything. Okay, so let's take a look back here and let's see if my canvas will clear this time. There we go. Uh, okay, so I've got this equation of 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 equals 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is put it in the proper form. So I've got 2x squared minus 5x equals a negative 2. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is divide both sides by 2. Okay. So that gives me these cancel out, leaving me with just x squared. So I have x squared here, a negative 5 over 2x and then I have a negative 1 here, okay? So now I have an equation here um, with my x now equaling, uh, or my x squared equaling 0. So we divide by whatever numerical coefficient is here, okay? If it's anything other than 1, we have to divide each term in order to get our x squared all by itself, okay? So that's an important step there. Okay, now... I have to uh, complete the square. So I take my negative 5 over 2, okay, and I'm going to complete the square, okay, which will give me a negative 5 over 4, okay, and then I take this and square it, and this is what I plug into both sides of my equation. Okay, so I got x squared minus my 5 over 2x minus 5 over 4 uh, squared. Oh, you know what? We've got plus, we'll do it like that. So plus a negative 5 over 4 equals a negative 1 plus a negative 5 over 4 squared. And again, this is basically comes out to be, um, let's see, this would be, you could put this as the actual squared number. So negative 5 times negative 5 is 25, 4 is 16. So you can put this here if you want, or do it in your next step, it doesn't matter to me, okay? Um, but we're, we plug that in in both, oops, I forgot my square there. Uh, we plug that in in both sides of our equation. Okay, now we have completed the square. Now we're going to uh, extract the root. Okay, or excuse me, first we factor. Okay, uh, so we factor this into x plus negative 5 over 4 squared. Okay. And this factors, or this uh, simplifies to 9 sixteenths, okay? Um, so that's how that simplifies. All right, so here, from this step now, we extract the root. And again, this is just from combining this or um, these two, either one. Um, they're the same thing, okay? Um, so we've got, um, now we factored, now we extract the root, Okay, so I have x uh, plus negative 5 over 4, and we're squaring this. Um, this is also the same thing here. Let's do it this way. Okay, since I have that negative, this is technically... Uh, x minus 5 over 4 squared, okay? Uh, that's the same thing, because when you have this negative sign, it basically overrides this plus sign. So this is actually x minus 5 over 4 squared. Don't forget your plus and minus sign. You've got 9 sixteenths, okay? 
So this comes out to x minus 5 over 4, and this comes out to plus or minus 3 fourths, okay? Then you solve for x, so x equals 5 over 4 plus or minus 3 over 4, and you have to solve for both of these. So first we have x equals 5 plus 3 over 4, and then we have x equals 5 minus 3 over 4. Okay, so 5 plus 3, 8 over 4, 4 goes into 8, so you have, um, excuse me, I just got distracted there, 5, 6, 7, 8, 4 goes in 8 two times, and then you've got 5 minus 3, which is 2, so x equals 1 half because this reduces to, this would be 2 over 4, and it reduces to 1 half. Okay, so these are my answers. Okay, and then we would plug these in just like we did before into our original equation to check. Okay, so you plug your 2 in here, 2 times 2 squared, um, minus 5 times 2 plus 2, uh, and that would equal 0 and 0, and then you plug in 1 half. 2 times 1 half squared minus 5 times 1 half plus 2 equals 0, okay? Um, so this is how we do this. So it's the same steps um, as we were doing before. Um, the only difference is, is now we're actually putting them together in an equation and actually solving 4x in each of the equations there, all right? So for today's homework, okay, you're going to be doing numbers 1, 2, 5, 8, and 13, okay? 1, 2, 5, 8, and 13. I know it's kind of a long process, so I'm not going to draw it out and have you do all of the blue tabs, but I do want you to get some practice in it, so make sure that you... Um, work through all of these. So 1, 2, 5, 8, and 13. All right. Um, and that will be your homework for tonight. Make sure you get that turned back into me before the end of the day. All right. If you guys have any questions, I know that there's a lot of information that one uh, lesson. If you have any questions, reach out to me, give me a call, shoot me a text, um, and we'll get it all sorted out. But this is an important process because completing the square you can use for any quadratic equation, okay? Um, so it's important to learn how to do this particular method because it applies to any of them. So if you're not sure which method to use for which quadratic equation, you can always go back to completing a square, okay? Um, so I want you to make sure that you have this process um, down, okay? And again, the steps for that is put it in the proper order, okay, which is your x squared, then your x equals your number without your variable, okay? Um, and then if the if your x squared has a number other than one uh, as a coefficient, you have to divide to get that x squared to, to uh, have a numerical coefficient of one. If it already has a numerical coefficient of one, then you can skip that, okay? The next step is completing the square. You take that linear equation, multiply it by one half, and then square that and add that number to both sides of your equation. Okay, once you've done that, then you factor. Um, you factor the left side, you simplify the right side, okay? And then after factoring, you extract the root. Make sure you put your plus or minus sign on the right side of the equation. After extracting your root, you solve for x, okay? And you can check by plugging those back into the original um, form of the equation. All right, guys, that's about it for today. Again, your homework 1, 2, 5, 8, and 13. Make sure you do those. If you have any questions, reach out to me. But other than that, that is all I have for you today, okay? I um, hope you guys um, understand all that. And if not, I will be expecting a call uh, from you guys. All right? All right, we'll talk to you later. Have a good day. Bye-bye.